Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and here we have the Praxis Ionic 21 piece lockpick set, which was kindly sent to me by uh, lockpickworld.com for my review. Uh, it's not paid review, all thoughts on my own, of course, but I did want to disclose that this was sent to me for the purposes of this review. So, um, instantly, you can probably tell there's something a bit different to the normal Praxis dual gauge pick set that you might be used to seeing, in that these are a matte black finish. Reading up on their website, it appears that this is ion vapor deposition, uh, designed to make them uh, smoother, uh, make them more anti-corrosive, and also to make them less shiny. Plus, let's be honest, they do just kind of look cool in black, don't they? Right? So, uh, whatever your reasons for wanting this, I imagine that if you like the look of them, you're going to be more drawn to it than uh, the anti-corrosion properties. So these picks here are all in 0.23 thousandths of an inch, which is around uh, just under 0.6 millimeters in thickness. So that's uh, that way. And then we have another bunch of, I think the same profiles, and they're in 0.15 inches, 15 thousandths of an inch. Um, oh, I accidentally got one of them mixed up, but you get the idea. Um, and these are just under 0.4 millimeters in thickness. You also get some, uh, so yeah, there's the rest of the 0.15s. You also get some turning tools. So we have a standard and a twist L wrench here, which again, this in, you know, really nice black finish. And it's not that weird painted finish you get on some of the cheaper Chinese picks. It it does feel and look different. It's more satin, I'd say. Um, and surprisingly, it doesn't take, you might see a little bit of fingerprint on here, but it's, it doesn't take fingerprints or the oil from your skin too much either, which um, also surprised me. You get a couple of uh, top of the keyway turning tools, and you even get one of the wire turners, which I kind of like, I'll be honest, a good one of these, they're quite strong, so um, they can be quite useful. Right, let me just lay all these out, we'll go through what the profiles are, then we'll have a uh, bit of a pick, we'll see how they fare up to the picking, then we'll do pros, cons, things I'd like to change before the end of the video. So, I have all the profiles out of the case, talking about the case, let's have a bit of a look at that, it's in a sort of camo, it's very lightweight, um, seems to be sort of fine though, from what I can tell. Not really sort of big on cases, but this seems sort of fine for a, a, a zip case. If you like camouflage, then this might be your thing. But we don't really worry about cases, do we? Let's get on to the actual pick profiles. What do we get? Well, we have, like I said, a dual gauge set. We have eight in one gauge, eight in another. Your 23 thousandths of an inch and the 15 thousandths of an inch, and they are in matched pairs. So whatever you have on this side, you have an exact copy in a different gauge on the other side. So what do we have? Well, we first of all have a couple of hooks here. And I think these are very nice profiles, sort of a, a very, I have to say, big fan of the low shank height and that profile, that short hook, that's what I'd probably use the most. But a nice medium hook there as well, a bit thicker, very good, but just really like that. Then we got our diamond type picks here. And you can see that we have a deforest and a standard uh, small half diamond. Uh, you can use these as picks and rakes actually, but Yep, seem to be very, very nice. Uh, we have some rake profiles here. What looks like a snake rake, a city rake or L rake, a, um, a dual peak, not quite kinetic, not quite bumpy enough, but like a dual peak rake and a triple peak here. And what I actually like the triple peak because it's got a slightly lower profile than a lot of other ones, so it gets into sort of smaller keyways. I, I do like this. I'm just trying to look at the finish of these picks. This being a good example of where you've got lots of peaks and troughs, and it's really good to sort of have a look at uh, how this has come up. And I have to say, everything feels smooth. There's no rough edges. I don't know what the finishing process is here, but you can see here that it's it's perfectly smooth everywhere. Then we have exactly the same in the 15 thousandths. You might be thinking, why do I want 15 thousandths of, of an inch 
what I want those almost 0.4 millimeter thick. Well, in a lot of keyways, you're probably going to be absolutely fine picking up through the keyway with a hook like this. But when you get to some of these weirder, um, tighter European style keyways, it's very hard to get even a 23,000 inch pick up throughout that warding. So just grab the same pick in 15 thousandths and oh yeah, look, I can actually pick up through the warding there. So I might not demo these, but just bear in mind that you can use these extra thin, look how thin they are, uh, profiles in those locks which you need them for. Uh, I wouldn't use these for your everyday picking unless you absolutely had to because obviously the thinner the pick is, the less durable it is. Um, even though these are made in high yield stainless steel, um, you still probably want to rely on your thicker picks so the better feedback and durability where you can. But as you all know, when you really need a thin pick, you really need a thin pick and the thicker ones won't do you. So let's do some demos. I have a very, very nice 40 mil brass padlock here. One of my favorite locks to pick, lots of spools in here. And it's got a nice open sort of keyway, which I think that this DeForest diamond would be, um, would be pretty good in. So I'm going to use top of the keyway using the thick pry bar and pop that in the top, which is a nice comfortable fit. And we're just gonna go along this lock and just see if there's anything to pick. And you hear those little clicks as I go through. Um, like I said, I love this lock because it's just got such good feedback, it really does. Uh, you might be able to see the counter rotation as I pick these spools. You see that deep false set now we're in? So we just go along and we're trying to find any pins which um, are giving us that uh, feedback and push them up. They'll give us counter rotation. They'll set back down. Uh, the feedback in these are pretty good, I have to say, these picks. And we are open. I mean, come on, that's a fun lock, right? Just so you know, it's just one of these true value locks uh, sent from America. So if you can get hold of one of these, get hold of one for practicing, very good. I really want to try out that short hook, so I have a nice Yale shutter lock with the smallest little keyway. And if I'm going to use bottom of the keyway tension, then of course I want to use a hook profile with a very, very low profile indeed, like this one. So bottom of the keyway tension, like that. Using this nice slim bottom of the keyway tension tool, bit of tension on, go back through the lock. Just hitting anything that feels like it's binding. Uh, pin five there at the back. Uh, there we go, into a false set. Pin one there, feels good. Ooh. Pin two. Pin five again, I think. So we, oh, into that deep false set again. So five, four, three. Doesn't feel like it needs to be set, I think. Uh, try it, no. Two. That's pin one, back to pin five. Three, into that deep false set again. I think we just hit one. Still not quite open, so somebody must be holding us back. Need to find that pin which is giving us that, or should give us some nice counter rotation. Could it be pin one here? I think it might be. There we go. And then last pin should be pin two and we're open. There we go. So yeah, fun little lock to pick. Nice tight keyway. I want to see if I can rate this lock as well with the triple peak since we have this in the vise. So it's gonna go in and give it a, a, a little jiggle and a little rake with this triple peak. Um, see if we can't sort of get an open uh, use the, the tip of the the uh, tool as well if, because we can and we have an open there we go I really like these wire turning tools in things like these master lock excels or uh, magnums depending on where you are in the world and what should I use next ah yes the sort of more medium hook. This should be perfect if we apply that nice heavy tension to the master lock that it sort of lights so that we can get that open and we are already open.
And I think last but not least, let's open this big chunky zone padlock with a city rake. Why? Well, I happen to know that this zone padlock will open with the city rake. We'll use the twisted tension tool because it just adds a little lighter touch and we'll go in there and we'll see if we can't sort of jiggle this lock open uh, using the city rake and a little bounce of tension. There we go. Before I give my conclusion, so I do want to just bring up the price. This will, of course, change depending on the uh, time you watch this video, um, what the exchange rates are, all that kind of stuff. But on the Lockpick World website, these are $84.99. That's a US-based site. And the UK sister site, UK Bump Keys, they are £69.74 for the 21-piece set, everything you see here. Okay, so what I like to do is pros, cons, things I'll do differently. Um, pros. Personally, and I know it's subjective, I really like the look of this 21-piece set. I, I like that black finish. I think it looks kind of smart and different. Uh, the picks are finished really well. I have to say, they feel smooth and nice in the hand. There's no sharp edges. Uh, there's no burrs or anything on here. It's just very smooth, well-finished uh, picks. And despite them not having any handles, they, they don't feel uncomfortable. Maybe you want to put some shrink tube over it if you're going to be picking for a long time. Depends on your levels of comfort, but that's always an option. A bit of clear shrink tube uh, would be probably quite good on these. Um, I haven't found I needed that. I've been picking with these for a while, but you know, you might find that's different. I like how thin the shank heights are on the tools as well. And the thickness is 23 thousandths of an inch. That just under 0.6 millimeters is a really nice thickness in terms of width for European keyways, which are a little bit tighter, more paracentric. Uh, and yeah, combined with these two thicknesses, really good. I like the fact that it's a dual gauge kit. Um, there's a lot of good things about this, I have to say. In terms of, um, well, I left this one dirty. Remember, these are raking inside uh, brass locks usually. And I don't know whether you can see on here, there's a little bit of, uh, brass deposited. Let me just rub it on my t-shirt. Two secs. There we go. And hopefully now you can see that most of it's cleaned off. Uh, let's have a look at the rake I've used the most. Just going to bring this up. And you can see here that this has been raked in and out of the pins. I, I can't see if any of the sort of ion deposit stuff, the black things come off. Not much, if anything. It seems to be relatively durable. I'd have to use this set for probably quite some time to really get a gauge on whether that black finish uh, will stay on or not, but it seems to be holding up quite well, uh, you know, in my little practice session I did earlier. So, um, yeah, uh, not too bad from what I can see. Okay, things I, I don't like. Um, not many things, I have to say. Uh, one thing is I don't really like the snake rate prof profile, I'll be honest with you. There we go. Uh, I don't like the fact that it seems to be one small hump and then sort of a platform. I like uh, two humps. I like it to be more snake-like, if that makes any sense. Uh, I'd like it to have a defined sort of peak ridge, if that makes sense. So this one I found to be a little bit lackluster in terms of its how it works in a lock, just because... Um, really, it just feels like a, a rounded half diamond as opposed to a snake rake. So I didn't really like that profile. Uh, anything else I didn't really like? Um, I like the fact that it's dual gauge, but what I did find was a bit strange is the fact that you've got so many rakes on uh, the thinner side. I find that you don't often, when you've got a really tight keyway, high security lock, uh, maybe apart from a triple peak, um, uh, maybe a good snake rake. I haven't found that raking is particularly helpful. I much prefer some more hooks. In terms of what I'd do different, again, not much. Like I said, maybe swapping out some of the uh, uh, rake profiles in the thinner gauge for more hooks. But then I actually think that what's missing here is maybe a medium hook. Maybe not a deep hook per se, but I would appreciate maybe um, a, a medium and a deep hook. Um, and I'd probably take out maybe um, these two profiles 
uh, or or at least if, if I had to swap them, I'd probably swap a medium hook and a deep hook for these two profiles. Um, I would keep these profiles and have extra medium and deep hooks just because I'm greedy. Um, but yeah, overall, I have to say that this is a really nice set. It, they, they, they feel nice in the hand, good feedback, nice profiles, apart from maybe that snake rake, thin shanks, good choice of thicknesses in the set. So yeah, I think overall I quite like this set, um, but I guess it is, as all these things are, subjective. So I would like to know your thoughts in the comments. What do you think? Have you got one of these sets? Do you have the normal dual gauge Praxis set, um, which doesn't have this ionic ion vapor deposition coating on it? Uh, let me know in the comments. I do read all the comments and reply to as many as I can. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you haven't subscribed and want to see more content like this, please do subscribe. It really helps my channel out. And of course, I'll see you all next time.